So now let's solve a practice question covering the mass moment of inertia. So this one's going to be under FE civil, FE mechanical, and FE other disciplines. So specifically, it's under dynamics, mass moment of inertia. So this one, I took it directly out of the course I have for FE civil. And it's going to be an interesting one and kind of a tricky one because it does not involve numbers, right? It involves variables. So in, in this case, it involves the variables M, the mass of the rod, and L, the length of the rod. And what we want to do is get the final answer and get that mass moment of inertia at a specific location in terms of a constant in front and the variable M, the mass of the rod, and the length of the rod squared. So remember, the FE will not always necessarily test you on calculation-based questions that involve numbers. Sometimes you have questions similar to this that involve variables. So let's make sure we're exposed to this type of question. We know how to solve these. And do not panic. Just apply your simple algebra. Apply, in this case, the parallel axis theorem, your FE handbook and you should be okay. And if you're looking for review material and a review course that covers hundreds of practice questions that involve calculation-based questions with numbers, we have the calculation-based questions that have variables similar to the one we're about to do here. And also we have those conceptual questions that we must also prepare for. So this course will cover hundreds of practice questions. I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step solution. I do not skip any steps. And most importantly, I'll always refer to the latest FE handbook. So we're gonna use the handbook. We're gonna practice a variety of questions, making sure we have a solid understanding of the concepts and well prepared before we take our FE exam. So check out the link in the description. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. So another mass moment of inertia question. And in this case, it's kind of a calculation based question. And we know here we're not actually given numbers and dimensions. We're given variables, right? And it's going to be the mass and the length variables. And we know on the FE, this is becoming more common where they just give you variables to make those questions a little bit harder. So we need to understand how to do these types of questions. So now let's focus first on the problem statement. We're told the moment of inertia about the centroid for a thin rod shown with a mass capital M and a length L is 112 ML squared. The moment of inertia about the centroid for this thin rod, about what the centroid for the thin rod is 112 ml squared. So they give, give us that. The mass moment of inertia for rotation about an axis at a distance one third L away from the left is most nearly what? So we're trying to find the mass moment of inertia here, right? At this point. What is the mass moment of inertia when we have rotation? about that specific location, which is one third L from the left, right? And that's what we want to find and we want to get the answer. So let's begin writing what we're given. We're given something important in the problem statement. We're given that for the centroid, where is the centroid of the rod? It's always dead center, right? At the midpoint. So the centroid, I'll label it. It's going to be approximately here. That's the centroid, right, of this rod. So we're saying they're giving us this mass moment of inertia for this rod, and it has a length L, right? It has a total length L, and we can see how it has a total length L because one third plus two third just gives you L, right? So it has a total length L. So the centroid is gonna be L over two and L over two, right? Because it's at the midpoint. So this is L over two. And this is L over 2, where the centroid is, right? So we're given this mass moment of inertia for the centroid if you have this type of rotation. So you can imagine this rod rotating along that axis, right? It's essentially that y-axis. Because based on the positive sign convention, this is x, this is y, right? And z, we usually come into the page or out the page. So we know here we have rotation about the y, and we're given the one, again, for the centroid. So let me denote it as I, Y, centroid. I, Y, centroid. That's given to be M, sorry, 112 M, L squared. That's good, given to be that. So we have that. Then we're told 
and we want to find what is the maximum of inertia at this one third L distance. And the way we will do that is using the parallel axis theorem. So let's go in the notes and we know in the notes I put the parallel axis theorem first. But you can find this on page 123 in the new FE handbook 10.0.1 under mass moment of inertia they give you the parallel axis theorem so it applies for the mass moment of inertia and the moment of inertia right it applies for both but we're going to use it specifically for the mass moment of inertia so let's go down where's the parallel axis theorem so it's discussed here right and we know the parallel axis theorem applies when we want to find the mass moment of inertia for anything other than the centroid right at some d distance with respect to the centroid of the shape with respect to the centroid of the shape we can find the mass moment of inertia that will have that d distance which is going to be the distance from the to a parallel axis and it's going to be the distance d from the axis through the body center of mass c from the centroid of the body center of mass so that's why we define the centroid for that rod and the equation is provided again in the FE handbook and it's going to be this so we will use this equation to actually solve this question so let me note it down the parallel axis theorem for the solution let's write that I and it's going to be IC plus M d squared so if you use this often you might have it memorized but okay so now we need to have ic and we need md squared so we have ic right for this whole rod it's only one shape right we don't have other shapes right we don't have a plate we don't have a circle we only have one rod we only have one shape right so for this, for this whole rod what's ic it's this right it's what we're given it's the the mass moment of inertia about the centroid with respect to that y-axis so that's given to be 112 ml squared but I want to show you something if they do not give you that you can actually get it from the tables under dynamics right the tables under dynamics at the very end of dynamics on 128 and 129 in the new FE handbook we know we can get the I the I about the centroid and in this case it's about the y-axis y is this way right so it's essentially here it's going to be at the centroid here this y here is at the end right be careful so this i y at the end it's going to be this equation so that that can be handy if you want to find it about the ends it's just one quick calculation and you just use this equation if you're looking at the ends at the ends here at the end where y is and the same is for z but look at this it says centroid so you have to focus on the centroid so centroid is iyc so it's going to be ml squared divided by 12 so the y-axis is going to be actually at the centroid right so this is the equation they give us but you can get that from the tables if they not, if they do not give you it on the fe so that's going to be what we put here right let's do that so i is going to be 112 ml squared plus now what's m lowercase m don't get confused by this sometimes you see uppercase m lowercase m it's still the same mass right in this case it's still the same mass of the rod so it's just gonna be m this lowercase m is just m for the rod the mass the total mass of the rod now we have d and that's gonna be the trickiest part what's going to be d let's go back to the lesson notes if we use this figure d again is going to be the distance from the centroid to the location we are trying to look at to the new location to the new axis so it's always from the centroid of the body that you're looking at to the new location that's always your d distance so if we go back here it's going to be from the centroid from the centroid always i'll use pink to the location you're looking at which is going to be here right it's one third from the left but it's just this distance and it's always going to be a positive value for that d value so this is actually our d from the centroid to the new axis 
that's one third away from the left which is going to be this right this axis of rotation so that's going to be D and how would you find D in this case if you had to look at the dimensions how would you get D so we know this is L over 2 this is one third L isn't D just L over 2 divided by sorry isn't D just L over 2 minus L over 3 yep yeah. so let me write that here D equals to L over 2 minus L over 3 it's this dimension minus this dimension so D equals if we do L over 2 minus L over 3 you get L over 6 or on the calculator you just do one half minus one third in the calculator you get L over 6 or 1 over 6 so we have D right we just found D and that's going to be the tricky part and that's what we put here so it's going to be L over 6 squared so now we just have to keep reducing this until we get something they want here right a fraction at the very end so I equals 112 ML squared plus M keep the M you don't square the M right then you do L squared divided by 6 squared so it's essentially you can take out sorry you have to keep the L it's gonna be L squared divided by 1 over 6 squared right you can take out that 1 over 6 squared L squared right so here you get L squared and 1 over 6 squared would give us 36 so all of this it's going to be over 36 so now you can reduce this further what we have to do here is take 112 plus 1 there's actually a 1 here right 1 over 36 you can add those two and if you add those two you get 1 over 9 so I equals to 1 over 9 and the ml squared is a shared term so you just keep that so it's going to be m l squared so that's going to be the answer and here it should be c